you don't see our uh, 11 members of our 2018 Delta Leadership Program, and uh, they're really eager to learn. And with that, I will turn it over to you and thank you for making the time to join us this morning. <clears throat> Bob would obviously want it to be here in person, but he's got a late morning conflict. This was the only way we could fit him in. And so by now, I think all of you should have have you handed that out, Jeremy? Yes, I have. By, all, by now, all of you should have Bob's presentation. Feel free to make notes on it as he's going through his slides. But Bob, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, you've seen enough of me uh, and heard enough about me. Let me talk now about the Delta. First of all, the way I look at the Delta is a little uh, larger than some uh, people do. It's closer to the definition of the Delta that's being used for the Delta uh, Heritage Area application. Um, it, it goes from Sacramento to Tracy and, uh, and to Benicia. We, I include Benicia in it. Um, thank you, Mayor, for being here. Uh, because it seems to me that this is the area that uh, was at one time and still to some extent today is the Delta. It, it, uh, uh, when people went through the Delta by boat, uh, this is what they, they did from San Francisco. In fact, the real triangle is Stockton, Stock, Stockton Sacramento and San Francisco in the early days. Uh, it's also where the Native Americans settled. They settled along the rivers and uh, in the Bay Area there. Uh, so if one wants to go back the 13,000 years uh, in which we've had habitation uh, in the, uh, the Bay Area, then one wants to start uh, with Benicia. So that's, uh, please keep that larger area in mind as I go through this uh, history. Hey, Bob. Um, yes. Excuse me. Bob, um, this is different because you're not in the room. If people have immediate clarifying questions, are you okay if I pause you a bit yeah. to pose those? Yes. Why don't you just break in if that, if that happens? And everyone, we tried this the other day, yesterday with Rachel. He might be able to hear you from the back of the room, but I might just repeat your question. But if he says something or you see something that you really want to clarify immediately, just raise a hand. I'll keep an eye out. Otherwise, maybe hold questions until the conclusion. Thank you, Bob. Okay, let me just recap a little bit about the Delta Narratives Project, which uh, the Delta Protection Commission funded. Uh, <clears throat> the, the idea was to try to link the history of the Delta to regional and national history. And we brought together a team of uh, scholars from area universities, archivists from museums, museum directors and professionals. And we tried to consult uh, the uh, uh, some 30 uh, organizations in the Delta, historic associations, museums, uh, other uh, cultural sites uh, in creating our report. Let me see here. I yeah, Bob, I those little pop-ups on the screen, I think if you close your email down, you might stop receiving those, so. Uh, close my email down. Uh, can I do that? How's that? Is that better? Just close your calendar, it'll get rid of it. There you go. Okay, okay. now there it goes, all right. I've had okay. a number of emails. Um, <laughs> Is there a question? No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Bob. What, what, are the, what were the conclusions of the Delta narrative uh, study? Uh, first of all, that the reclamation and restoration of the Delta, uh, both the, the early reclamation to try to create the islands and make it uh, more useful for agriculture, and then the later restoration uh, for habitat for a, a variety of species, are really interesting stories and they need to get out how, how that's happened. Um, and, and to some extent, they tug against each other. In other words, reclamation made restoration necessary, uh, but they're, they're also to some extent complementary. Second is that 
the Delta from about 1880 until about 1930 really was the Silicon Valley for agriculture, primarily in Stockton, a little bit in Rio Vista, but also in some of the other towns. There were significant uh, technological innovations, um, the most famous one being the tractor, uh, which was invented in Stockton to be used in the Delta, but also all the dredging equipment that was necessary uh, to, to uh, make the Delta productive. Uh, th this area was uh, a hotbed of innovation in that period. Third point, um, the, uh, uh, the, there's been a lot of economic ups and downs in the Delta, uh, but the Delta is also a, a place where uh, a large number of ethnic groups created communities and stayed together despite some of the economic ups and downs because uh, labor was needed uh, throughout because of the agricultural nature of the place. And uh, so while technology and crops shifted, uh, many of these uh, ethnic communities hung on through it. Um, the, uh, finally, in terms of the way artists and writers have pictured the Delta, it's a, a, a kind of uh, uh, mixed story. On the one hand, it's seen as a promised land, an Eden, uh, a, a, a wonderfully fertile place to grow anything. Uh, it's certainly the reason that Native Americans stayed here for 13,000 years, uh, slightly changing their culture over that time, but with tremendous consistencies, because what they were doing was managing an Eden. Uh, on the other hand, uh, particularly uh, as uh, nature took its toll with flooding um, and where labor was being used, uh, including from the beginning uh, of, of the settlement of, of people from the West, uh, native labor and then later uh, immigrant labor was not always uh, a good story about the relationship of that labor and their, the, the, the system under which they were uh, being employed. Um, but uh, the, um, let me go back to that other slide over here. Oops, a daisy, I did something wrong there. Ah, sorry here. Uh -huh. I'm not doing as well as I wanted to here. You're doing all right, Bob. Thank you, you're good. Let me just get that, that slide back here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, the, this contrasting theme as the promised land, but also a place uh, where there were abuses and where if you were to believe Joan Didion, the, probably the most famous writer to write about the Delta, that it was a place where it was no as psychologically healthy to live. Of course, she thought that about California too. Um, we did in the report we suggested that there should uh, be developed a website for the delta as a whole that school curriculum should uh, reflect more the history of the delta that the delta might want to pull together some sort of uh, annual celebration of itself as a whole and that more scholars should be doing research on the delta uh, if you're interested in our reports um, they're on the uh, Delta Protection Commission website. There are four of them. Um, one deals with agricultural reclamation and restoration uh, called Managing the Garden. A second deals with transportation, trade and communication, the trains, the boats, uh, the trucks. Uh, uh, the third uh, called Building Community deals with the economics and ethnicity and also the creation of the towns in, in the Delta. Um, and then finally, uh, one on literature and the visual arts in the Delta. Uh, we hope in the future, particularly on that last one on Delta and visual arts to maybe do a publication um, of the creative uh, reflections on the Delta that have uh, occurred there for a long time. Okay. That's my promo. Now, now for the serious stuff. What I want to try to do is to give you an overview of 
the sense of place of the delta. And by that, I mean the way in which human beings interacted with nature there. The, the story of the delta is, uh, is both natural history and human history uh, interacting with each other. One of the things that's fascinating that we don't know very much about is the fact that the Native Americans were actually in the Delta region at the time in which uh, the uh, Golden Gate was created as it is now. It, it was originally an inland sea and then broke out uh, and created even to the Farallons as related to that geological change. Native Americans witnessed that. Uh, so from the very beginning, the major changes uh, in the Delta area, uh, geologically and climatically, were, were witnessed and uh, endured by uh, humans who lived here. Um, one of the things I think that's interesting to do is to th think about the Delta as a part of California. Like California, it was multicultural. From the beginning, there were tribes next to each other that didn't speak each other's languages. Um, they, there may have been as many as uh, 300,000 in the Central Valley, um, many in the north end of the valley uh, for uh, 10,000 to 13,000 years. Um, when I say the, the federal godfather, the, the reason that the Delta after the, uh, the uh, statehood uh, became important agriculturally was because the federal government uh, uh, supported the reclaiming of uh, wetlands, swamp areas. Uh, it had done so before California came in the Union, and that continued. That ability to uh, create a, uh, a, a, an agricultural mecca was uh, uh, supported by the federal government, and then later because of the, the, the impact of all of the water projects. Uh, the most important probably was the Shasta project um, because uh, during the latter part of the 19th and early 20th century, the Delta was uh, getting a lot of salt water intrusion and the salinity rate was quite high. Uh, had it not been for Shasta and increasing the uh, water flow through the Delta, uh, it would have become much less uh, productive, not only for agriculture, but also for factories who needed fresh water. So the federal government involvement with water management and releasing that property is critical. And uh, Joan Didion has a wonderful essay on how the federal government really made California possible. Uh, I won't go into that detail, but uh, both the Delta and California are have been dependent um, for good and for maybe bad sometimes on the federal government. The, the Delta, like California, has been in the global economy from the beginning. It was very involved in the uh, gold rush. And from the gold rush on, uh, people and products flowed in and out of the Delta to uh, overseas locations. Uh, Delta has been from the beginning in the trade route and still today in terms of the quality of its agriculture. Um, in the Delta, um, nature had to be fought. Not California is a wonderful place because we have a wonderful climate, a, a wonderful, uh, a, a very it's very nice to live here. Uh, but it, in the Delta, it it wasn't always nice because of flooding, uh, and sometimes, particularly after the gold rush, that flooding brought down um, sludge from the uh, uh, placer mining, and uh, which killed fish and. Uh, uh, damaged farmland. Uh, so the Delta was something to be lived with. Uh, I think of uh, the little town, uh, which is not too far from Benicia, uh, Collinsville, right across from Pittsburgh, uh, which is no longer really there. But uh, for a long time, they uh, built their houses on stilts uh, because it was the only way they could be sure uh, that the uh, uh, flooding, which happened every year or so, uh, in those days uh, could be survived. Um, the Delta has never worried about water. It has always had it. It may now be worrying about it with tunnels diverting it, but it has always been lucky to have water where the rest of California really is different that way in the sense that water is scarce, particularly in the Southern part of the state. Uh, 
the, the Delta has always been ag, where I think one would say that California, and certainly in recent years, has been dominated by its uh, urbanizations. It's got world-class cities in San Jose, San Francisco, and LA and San Diego. Uh, it, it is a, it, it is, I think people think of California uh, more as urban. They don't realize how important ag is, but everybody in the Delta does. Uh, un unfortunately, the employment in the Delta is, uh, has been uh, people who don't usually make a lot of money. Um, the best time in the Delta for farmers was probably from 1900 to, a, to the Second World War. Um, that's when you get those beautiful houses being built in the Delta, maybe from the 1880s to the Second World War. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, jobs, even for the employer and the employee, were risky, where I think one would say California has been seen generally as a, as a, a place for opportunity for jobs. Uh, the, the Delta has certainly in recent years, uh, but even earlier, been an isolated area. Uh, it is it is a difficult to get from there to one of these major cities. Uh, for a long time, Sacramento really wasn't a major city, but now it is, and it's a little easier to get there. But San Francisco was always the mecca, uh, but not that easy. It could take you a day or a day and a half by boat to get there. Um, where certainly the rest of California uh, has always been a, on the cutting edge. Uh, even in the 19th century, I recall that when Verdi composed an opera, uh, within a year or a year and a half, it was produced in San Francisco, often in French, uh, because there was a large French community that liked opera. But we were certainly in, in the swim for the culture of the 19th century and, and still today. Um, the Delta has never really had much power in the state legislature. Uh, it's, uh, it, it, it is divided into uh, five counties. Uh, it doesn't have its own. Uh, representative in Congress, uh, it, it doesn't have the, the power that other areas of the state have. And I think there's a feeling in the Delta that they've had great dreams uh, about a, a sort of Jeffersonian <laughs> Republic there where people uh, worked on farms, lived on farms, and uh, had a really good life. Um, but it, there's always been a, a sense that it's going to be next year. Uh, that it's, it's had that dr those dreams have had to be deferred. Let me start my march through the history um, and say a little bit about the Native American people. Uh, yeah, I have here 10,000 years. Uh, that's the conservative estimate. Uh, most people these days think that it was 13,000 years of uh, uh, natives living in the area. Uh, I show on the slide a painting of a Miwok village. Uh, obviously, Laura Cunningham did not see that village, uh, but uh, she's recreating what it would have looked like. The Native Americans settled along the rivers. Uh, they um, uh, we were learning more about the way they managed the, uh, the uh, uh, agriculture by uh, burning and by um, um, uh, periodically culling uh, 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 fish and, and birds. Um, they, the, Diablo was the one thing that sort of tied all of the people in this area together. It was a holy mountain for them all. Um, they had similar myths about uh, the way in which uh, they were created and the world was created. Uh, the midwife for Native Americans in this area was animals. Animals brought them into existence. And they tell a story of a great flood in which um, uh, all the humans and others were, were, or most were killed, but coyote and a few of the other animals uh, wished human beings back into existence. So the, the dependence on the animal world, the closeness to the animal world, um, and also the personalization of nature. They had names not only for varieties of trees and places, but specific rocks. So these, uh, they, they humanized um, their environment and saw it as an extension of themselves. <clears throat> uh, now, the first contact that uh, most natives in this area had with um, uh, people from the West 
uh, actually was with trappers from the uh, uh, from the, the uh, Hudson Bay Company that came down and were trying to get pelts here. Um, and in fact, some of them may have died because of that contact, because of the uh, of the bringing in of malaria and other Western diseases, um, particularly in the 1830s. However, uh, the uh, once the mission was uh, established at San Jose, uh, San Jose mission uh, recruited actively, uh, particularly Miwok uh, natives, to be part of the uh, mission agriculture, to be part of the labor there. Um, the Native Americans had a, uh, a complex relationship with the missions. Um, on the slide just before, um, so I'll go back to it for just a minute. The, uh, here, we'll get to it. Uh, you'll notice that picture there. Um, that actually is a picture of a, a Native American who uh, may have been um, leading a, um, a rebellion against the mission, uh, but he then later died uh, at the mission, um, he, having converted to Christianity uh, as he got older, wanted to be there and buried there. So it, it was a, a complex on the native point of view from what whether this was a, a good place or a bad place. Um, from the uh, Spanish point of view, it was seen as the, the Delta area was seen as a retreat area for natives, and they feared going in that in there. Uh, the missions often worked with the military to reclaim na natives who had escaped the mission or to collect new ones for the, their labor endeavors. Um, but the feeling for the, uh, of the Spanish toward uh, the Delta area was as a, uh, an area where it was an armed camp where they had, if they went in there to try to uh, recover natives. And so this picture, uh, which is actually was drawn for this area, uh, so it gives a feeling of how they thought about um, uh, the native peoples in the Delta. Um, when the Spanish uh, retreat and Mexico takes over this part of uh, California, um, they gave out Spanish land grants, as many of you know, and uh, the, the, probably the two most famous in the Delta, though there were others, uh, was the one given to John Sutter and the, uh, the one given to Charles Weber. Uh, in order to get a Spanish land grant, you had to become a citizen of, uh, or, or, excuse me, a, a, a Mexican land grant. You had to become a citizen of Mexico, which they did. Um, and they were given large tracts of, of property um, with these expanded visions uh, of what they were going to do with it. Uh, Sutter's was more of a, I would say, almost medieval vision of um, uh, an agricultural, uh, uh, fortress and uh, trading uh, area. Uh, he uh, used native labor very effectively. Uh, he, or, he, he not only uh, raised crops, uh, but also created products which he thought he could sell to people on the frontier, like blankets and other things like that, including whiskey. Um, because he himself, I gather, was an alcoholic, and that was good for him to have that there. But in any case, uh, he, his idea was to be an, uh, uh, a, a department store for people on the frontier uh, and possibly to ship it uh, out and trade with it. Um, of course, all of those things went away when the gold rush happened. Weber had a more urban vision of what he was doing. Um, the gold rush actually made Weber because it, he... Uh, he Stockton became the city from which the southern mines were uh, accessed, um, and he early platted uh, Stockton um, uh, in, in, as a grid, uh, living areas out for parks and other facilities. Uh, he, he early on had the idea that he would become a town. <laughs> I, I might also mention that during this period there were people who tried to do some of these things that weren't as successful as Sutter and Weber also with Mexican land grants. Uh, John Marsh uh, uh, in the East Bay and uh, near where you are um, and very near where you are, uh, a, a group of, uh, uh, of Eastern uh, entrepreneurs tried to create something they thought was going to be the New York of the West. Uh, in the area of Pittsburgh and, and Antioch. 
um, they were not as successful as uh, a Sutter and, and uh, Weber, partly because they didn't become the gateways to the gold rush. Now, during the period of the gold rush, the Delta really was not seen for itself so much as it was uh, for uh, traveling through. It was a highway. Um, and which uh, some people didn't think the stops were, uh, they, they were more like on the freeway when you, when you uh, stop at a convenience store. Uh, George Dor Darby was a, uh, uh, a humorist uh, who was uh, also a military cartographer. Uh, and he has a wonderful account, uh, uh, rather ironic, of staying in Venetia. Um, I don't know if the mayor knows of that account, but I don't think she'd want to publish it again. Um, it, 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 it suggested that it was pretty uh, much. The second thought, okay, I was just giving it the facial expression. Do you know the story? I don't think I know the story, and if I did, I wouldn't admit it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I'll check in. You don't want to admit it. Uh, he has a, he, he, he was widely published read by Mark Twain and others uh, during the 19th century for his uh, reflections on California. But his particular essay on Venetia uh, suggests that they were uh, pretty high on themselves, but they didn't have much to offer, and that he was very happy to get out of there. Um, I think that's probably the view of a lot of the uh, travelers from San Francisco to Sacramento or Stockton in those days that along the way wasn't much to see. So you you, you stayed on the boat. So far as I know, Mark Twain never uh, uh, worried about, uh, wrote about the Delta. He wrote about another Delta, but he, he never, uh, he worked uh, in Sacramento uh, as well as San Francisco. And we know he went back and forth between the two, but he's never written about it. Bret Hart did, but the only essay we know about from Bret Hart is a, a story taken from the top of Diablo in which he suggests that there's a, a, a real change in the migration, that early on it was uh, dominated by uh, uh, Span Spaniards and the Spanish Empire, and their way of thinking about things was over, um, and that what was coming was much more rationalistic, focused on making money um, on agricultural and mining, um, and that California ought to get ready for that. Uh, the, the, the story itself is a story of the devil meeting a Jesuit on the mountain and uh, telling him about the future. Um, the one of the reasons the, the waterways were so useful is that that uh, it, very soon um, it wasn't sailboats uh, that were going up and down the delta. It was steamships which could uh, 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 plow ahead no matter whether they had wind or not. And anybody who's been out on the Delta in a, in a sailboat knows you can be becalmed, and that's no fun. Um, and so the steamship uh, became the way to travel on the Delta. And there were some, unfortunately, some remarkable uh, uh, crashes or burnings of steamships. But by and large, it, it uh, through until 1930, um, uh, there were uh, boats plowing the Delta. Um, as the 19th century develops, uh, there are two themes that come out of biography and literature. Um, one is the struggle between investors and farmers, or who were often called squatters, people who came out and thought, my gosh, this is a wonderful place. I'm going to take this piece of property and become a farmer, and people who uh, manipulated with the governments, uh, both the federal and state, to buy that property or own that property or dominate that property. Um, <laughs> Josiah, who is, a, uh, is best known as a philosopher who uh, was born and raised in California but left for Harvard University and did his best work there, wrote one novel about um, uh, this corporate greed and, and its, in, its impact uh, in the uh, area of mostly uh, Contra Costa County. It was the, it, the it's Oakland and then across the mountains in Contra Costa, uh, where he's set the story um, of the tensions between uh, the investor and the, and the uh, squatter. Um, and, and the other tension that's 
evolving land there is between uh, uh, Asian folks from Asia and uh, 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 the, the, really the law in California. Uh, th there were uh, uh, people first from China and then from Japan who flooded into California for a variety of uh, labor opportunities earlier for the gold rush itself. Um, but they were not, uh, the laws were passed starting in the 1870s and continued into the 1920s preventing them from owning property, uh, even though many of them were, were uh, very uh, entrepreneurial. Probably the most famous one in, in the Delta area that I know of is George Shima, who was called the Potato King, who raised potatoes in the Delta, but could not own the land on which he was raising the potatoes, um, and ultimately got out of the business because he couldn't dominate his property, uh, even though he he had and he and his investors uh, made a considerable amount of money. Um, so where early on it was a, sort of a tug of war between um, uh, squatters and investors. Uh, later on, it was uh, the law versus the immigrant uh, that was the uh, uh, economic tension that overflowed in the Delta. Uh, I mentioned in this period that I, I look at the Delta as the uh, um, Silicon Valley for agriculture from 1880 to 1930. Probably the most famous person uh, involved in this is Benjamin Holt from Stockton, who created the uh, tractor as we know it, uh, the Caterpillar. Uh, he later moved in the, in the, in the 1920s uh, to Peoria, Illinois, where they are now in the Midwest, because he could distribute it more easily to the entire country. Um, but th the whole idea that Ag, that uh, technology was going to be applied to agriculture in the Delta and it was going to uh, make a paradise is really shown by this cover from the Byron Times, which was a, 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 a newspaper published for a long time, sort of chronicling the, the agricultural community of the Delta. And you'll notice these perfectly cut canals. Um, you'll notice that, that at that time there's roads uh, 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 and, and, and uh, trucks and cars. There's a bridge at the end there that's built. Um, uh, everything is very orderly um, and uh, technology is uh, making the best of this rich and fertile uh, area. Um, that certainly was the vision that between the technology plus agriculture was going to make paradise uh, in this period. Oops, the daisy. Okay, let's try again here. Am I hitting the wrong button? Sorry. Okay, let's see. Here. Okay. Um, overlapping with the uh, agricultural revolution, though happening a little bit near the end of it, uh, or as uh, maybe as it's maybe it's reaching its peak. The um, Delta is also seen as a place for a great escape uh, for people who want to drop out of the society that is San Francisco. Um, and the, the two examples I, I'd like to use are, first of all, Jack London, who he loved to be on the water. And when he wasn't sailing off into the Pacific, he and his uh, second wife uh, would come up the Delta. Uh, but some he would stop in Delta towns uh, either for a drink, which he liked, or to give a speech, which they didn't like, uh, because he had socialist views that didn't fit with the, the views of many of the people who were living in Rio Vista and some of the other towns. But uh, this was his major escape uh, with his friends, uh, sailing up and down uh, the Sacramento River. The other person who uh, really loved it uh, was Earl Stanley Gardner, who wrote all the Perry Mason mysteries. In addition to his some 30 or 40 mysteries that he published, um, he published three books on the Delta, uh, uh, talking about the various places you could stop to eat, to talk about the various characters that lived there. Um, uh, 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 he, he, he had a vision of this as a, uh, 
the, the best place for a vacation. And I'll read just the, the, that part of that paragraph. In the Delta country, one can make rental reservations, leave from almost any part of California in the morning and be sleeping that night on a houseboat tied up to some little cove away from all the noises of civilization, slumbering in the calm tranquility of utter silence and sleeping as late as anyone wants the next morning. Okay, that was the idea that this was the perfect Mecca uh, for the uh, uh, person who civilization was pressing too closely to. Okay, at, at the same time, ag um, did have to use tech, did use technology and profited from it. But the other side of ag was the, the need for massive numbers of agricultural workers. Um, in the early period, uh, in the 19th century, um, many of those workers were Chinese. Uh, but starting at, in about 1890, uh, there was an influx of Italian workers. Uh, and then in the, in the, uh, after 1900, there were, uh, it was a large influx of, of Japanese workers. Um, there, uh, there were issues with uh, the, the uh, uh, particularly uh, uh, unions and other organizations in California being uh, anti-Japanese um, um, uh, and Chinese and laws were passed uh, to restrict their uh, 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 migration and what they could do when they were here. Uh, so Filipino workers were the perfect solution. Uh, many of them had uh, left the Philippines uh, after the Spanish-American War. Some went to uh, Hawaii uh, and later came to California. Um, before, uh, during the, in the 30s, Stockton had the largest Philippine uh, uh, population outside Manila. Um, so uh, in fact, one of the things that is not well known is when uh, UFOC uh, was organized for um, agricultural workers by Chavez and others in California, that uh, a, a large portion of that union and the leadership of that union uh, uh, was a Philippine American uh, because of their involvement uh, in, the, in the Delta. They did not tend to live in the Delta as some of the other immigrant communities did. Uh, they tended to like the urban life and lived in Stockton. Um, this is a poem from the 30s that sort of captures the flavor of the tensions by then between agricultural labor um, and, the, and their bosses and the system uh, in the valley. Um, and I'll just read it, parts of it really. Uh, it's it's uh, very similar uh, to poetry that was being written uh, during and after the First World War. We meet in this green valley, green field today to honor comrades gone their way, victims of struggles long to end greed's wrong. They died from many shots and blows dealt out by cruel and foolish foes who rob is, who's been, who's, who's have robbed is blind too long, too long a time. But I do not come here to curse, though bosses like James Cone and Durst just laugh at hunger, sickness, and thirst, and shamed our kids and wives, and took these brothers' lives. Through Wheatland and Visalia ran with blood of many a working man. Fresno jailed us in ire. Sacto used whips and fire. No, I stand up here just to say that solidarity today will make our union's dreams true sooner than it seems, and finishing to bear my head in honor of these martyred dead who in these fields did fall doing honor to us all. One of the things that is implicit in this is that the Delta is here seen as part of the whole Central Valley labor uh, movement um, as it was certainly during the Chavez period, though interestingly, uh, most people don't realize how important the, the Delta workers were uh, to that movement. Uh, this really brings us up to the to the current day. The 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 
ag where tech's been exploited for it and where labor has there's labor tensions in the in the delta and where the delta is a uh, an escape and a recreation area um but i wanted to argue that uh for many people uh who don't experience the delta um uh, it's seen as either a, a, a potential of a conservancy or a conveyance it's either a habitat or, or a place to store water um and uh, William Everson is a poet uh, who tried to express the, the nature of the Delta and see see it as that picture below him does uh, Turner's one of uh, uh, Turner's uh, photographs of the of the Delta as a almost pristine um, um, uh, natural vista, where Pat Brown saw it as a part of a of a very a sophisticated conveyance system from uh, Shasta uh, to, San, to, to San Diego uh, as of water. Uh, Wayne Tebow, uh, the artist, uh, what I'm interested in there is the colors he uses, um, which may, may, may make you think of, my God, these are not na natural. In fact, if you take an aerial view of parts of the Delta, it looks like that but it's certainly not something that is nature's way. It's uh, human imposition on the Delta. Um, and I think that is partly uh, Thibault's message is that uh, this is an area which uh, man has rearranged in an almost unnatural way. So what is going to be the sense of place for our generation and beyond? Um, I, I think one possibility is that the Delta has preserved uh, a lot of sites uh, relevant to California history. Uh, in some ways, walking Delta streets is like walking through California history. And that it, it trying to preserve the area as a national heritage area, uh, it seems to be the, the best place to re still recapture um, our history from the Native American uh, through to today. Uh, that would take some protection of existing uh, buildings and bridges and roads uh, and uh, the ecology of the area as well as preserving agriculture there. Uh, it's not clear how far that, whether this will succeed, uh, but uh, I remember reading a quote from one of the uh, people who've written a book, uh, a sort of a travel book on the Delta, saying that if the Delta existed in any other state in the Union, it would already be a state or national park. And, and having lived in Florida a long time and watched the Everglades evolve in that direction, I agree with that. So uh, this is a recap of what I've said. Uh, you have it printed on those uh, sheets that are in front of you uh, to try to give you some sort of a timeline for the Delta from Native Americans to Spanish to Mexican to gold seekers to uh, corporations and immigrants to agricultural inventors to uh, highlighting the, the labor issues in the Delta uh, to seeing the Delta as a, a place for dropouts and as people who escape to see it uh, as a uh, uh, through the eyes of engineers and environmentalists and possibly in the future to see it uh, in the eyes of cultural tourists. I'm done. <laughs> okay, Bob, thank you very much. And uh, for all of you in the room, you're looking at these last two slides saying, it's not on my handout. I'm a cheapskate. I just printed it black and white and something happened when I did that and this all disappeared. I will get this to you uh, subsequent to the class today. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no, 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 not, not your fault, Bob. It, uh, it shows up perfectly on the screen. Um, that's quite a tour through Delta history. Um, and what a tour guide to have taking us through. Are there any 